Hello, I'm Maria from the Rich and Simple Living. Um, if you're new to my channel, it covers mainly homeschooling, homesteading, home life type of things. So I suppose today's video is a bit of sort of homesteading, home life, because what I'm going to do is attempt to make bread. I have this brand new bread maker for Christmas. And I have used a bread maker before. I had one all oh, years and years ago. And um, I can't remember what happened to it actually, whether I just stopped using it and sold it or whether it wore out, I really can't remember. Because I used to do a lot of bread by hand as well by putting things to prove into the airing cupboard. But as we don't really have the same sort of system now as we did then, I thought it might be nice to have a bread maker again and have another go at making bread. Plus it's quicker and less messy and, you know, takes up less space than me trying to put things into the airing cupboard and because there's definitely no room in there. And it's not on all the time anyway, like it used to be. It's on a different system now. So I thought, yeah, we'll try bread maker. So I got bought one for Christmas and I've not used it yet and I can't remember how to use a bread maker because it really was a long time ago when I last had one. I mean, we're probably talking about 20 years ago, maybe a bit more. <laughs> it really was a long time ago. So it's like having one new for the first time. I thought we'll have a go with it together and see what happens. You might as well see whether it works, whether it doesn't work. And a bit like when I did my air fryer the other night, I was a bit, mm, don't know about it really, but I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna try other things in it and adjust things. I've worked out how to adjust everything. And I thought, might have another go in with that at some point. So you perhaps see me do something again with that at some point. So I wouldn't mind trying to do some stir frying in that. But anyway, that's then, this is now. We're going to have a go at making just a basic white loaf. I'm going to try making a large one. I've got a booklet. I'm sorry I can't put you down to see a great deal because my kitchen, I mean, those of you who've been following me a while know what my kitchen's like. I can virtually touch wall to wall near enough, just about an inch off touching side to side. So I really haven't got anything much in there, that's a dog, to um, play with. It's more like a ship's galley, my kitchen is. So yeah, I can't get you brilliantly to see what I'm doing, but I'll try my best anyway. So without further ado, we'll have a go at this loaf of bread. So I'm going to try and make a basic white two pound loaf. Now it comes in cup sizes, although there is a conversion table, but I'm not too worried because with this um, bread maker, they've given me the cup anyway, because it's in American sizes or something but they give you the cup to use so I, I haven't got to worry about converting it I'll just do it the way that they've told me plus they've given me like teaspoons and tablespoons so obviously the large size of tablespoon smaller size of teaspoon so I haven't got to worry about messing around measuring things out which I think is quite good because it's one less hassle isn't it and the thing with bread making you've got to more or less get it quite right otherwise it might not work so we'll give it a go and we'll see what it's like so it says for a basic white bread and i'm going to go for the two pound larger loaf size i just i'm assuming i just took everything in together so first of all i need fast action yeast which is one and a quarter teaspoon now i've got sachets and i'm not quite sure um what size the sachets are to be honest um 56 grams eight times so shall we open it and see give might give me more of a close to check that first shouldn't I really so let's have a look oh each one is seven grams so what i really needed to do was see what seven grams was equivalent to it's quite nice because this little book I've got has got a conversion table. So we'll have a look. Um, what grams is what? So we're looking for ooh, corns, butter, pasta, sugar. Hmm, can't find it at the minute. Uh, da -da 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 doesn't actually say. Am 
might just have to go away and investigate this. Just a moment. Well, all I can see it says is one and a quarter teaspoon. So what I'll do is, um, which is difficult to get one of them teaspoons. I've got little sachets. Better if it's in a tub and I can just do it out. But, so it's one and a quarter teaspoons. Um, I've got to make sure I follow the right one or I might wander across to the other one. I'm not sure I measure quarter. One will be easy enough. But if I just cut the corner off, so I can make it a bit like a funnel to pour out and we'll see what happens <laughs> we'll put it on there shall we and you can see what I'm doing whoa we're going a bit everywhere maybe I better put it on the side and show you in a minute Oof. right so We've got one, probably a bit more than one, and we've got to do a quarter. Do you know it looks like tiny fine seeds? I'm not quite sure to quarter is. Maybe that. Maybe that would be a quarter. Shall we go with it? It'll either work or it doesn't work. I've got um, yeast on the side now. But we've still got some left in there actually. I'm going to have to put a little bit of tape on that I think. Well I'll pop it back in there because if I leave it out it's going to go upside down and go everywhere. So right we've done our fast action yeast. Then we've got strong white bread flour four cups. So let's get the cups and have a look. So this right up to the top is one cup. So we'll fill this four times. I've got some organic strong white flour. So we'll try that and see. <laughs> everything with me is trial and error, and, and normally more error than anything else. So we'll fill this to the top. Do you know it's so awkward when you're filling things. Shall I see if I can bring you down a bit and you can see what I'm filling. How's that? And you can see what I'm actually doing. It is a bit awkward. I think my bag's big enough for four cups, actually. <laughs> Give it a shake. That's the trouble when you buy organic. The bags are smaller than the normal ones. Well, it's not quite to the top. We'll keep going. I don't bang it too much because uh, otherwise it's going to go everywhere. <laughs> right, put one in. I'm just going to do three more now. Okay, so I've done four. And there's still plenty left. But if this works out, I'll get another bag of flour and then I'll be able to do more. <laughs> So right, we've got four of those in. We'll have a look what um, cup says. Salt, two and a half teaspoons of salt. Now I'm not really keen on salt, but the fact that the recipe says you need everything in it or it won't work means I will have to do it. So what did I say? Two and two and a quarter, or two and a half? Two and a half. <laughs> Better leave it on the flat side. I've got a tendency to pick it up, which is silly really, because um, I'll tip it everywhere. I can't get it out. I'm not used to using salt at all. Oh dear. <laughs> it doesn't help because me... Um, tub's nearly empty probably out of date actually because <laughs> I don't really use salt much so now we've got to try and do half now right so roughly half yeah so that's that then not really keen on putting salt in but 
we have to and the worst thing now I've got to put in that I'm really not keen on is two tablespoons of sugar now if I could avoid putting the sugar in I would but the fact that sugar aids fermentation with the yeast then I do need to put it in or it's not going to work so regardless of whether I like it or not it's got to go in so this is tablespoons so one So that's easier when you've got a tub and you can just scoop in. I think I'm going to start having to have tubs of everything so I can scoop it easier. Right, so we've got the sugar in. Now it says we've got to put four tablespoons of sunflower oil in. Well, I don't use sunflower, I don't buy it at all. But I do use olive oil, so I'm going to pop some of that in. I'll just collect it. It was the one thing I forgot to pick up. I've had to go down and get it. So... Um, yeah, I've got olive oil. I like olive oil. I use olive oil with everything. So where are we? Four tablespoons. So we'll use this thing again. Um, four tablespoons. easy to do actually pour that in so one Ooh, I nearly had it over two it's the one thing I don't want to spill because it's horrible and greasy three And then one more. Don't think I've got to work out with this. I never thought to look. Um, what is machine washable? Dishwasher safe, you know. <laughs> what can go in the dishwasher with all of this? I don't know if the little bit, because it's a little compartment, as you can see in the middle, that I'm putting it all in that does it. So I don't know if it's dishwasher safe. I must have a look at that. I've not noticed it written anywhere. So I must check. So that's the oil. Then we've got, it says, um, four tablespoons of skim milk powder and then one and a half cups of water. But it says you can convert it all. If you're using fresh milk, you can convert it all. So you won't need the four tablespoons of skim milk. You would just put the one and a half cups of milk in which is what I'm going to do because I haven't got any dried milk so I thought well I might as well go straight for the fresh milk so because I put my flour in here I can't see now <laughs> um where are we it's all looking and checking into one and one and a half cups so let's have a look on here which is one and a half cups one and a third Two thirds. That's so we'll have to go to one and then somehow do the half. I can see where the half is. Third. Uh, oh, here we go. What's on this side? Three quarters. Okay, yep, yeah, there it is. I can see. So, because I've had the flower in, I can't see. So, I really don't remember how I did all this before. When I had a machine before, and I know I used it quite a bit, but it's been so long. Just hope this works out, it doesn't come out a sludgy mess. So we need the half now. I've lost the half. Half there. So if I keep my finger on it. It is good that they've given you this cup. Like I say, there are other measurements in there that you can use, you can convert to. So it's not a problem if you didn't want to use a cup. Oh. All right, put the half in. Hopefully that's right. I'll wash them by hand anyway. So that seems to be all, everything we need. So now we'll just go over to the instructions on how to cook it and you know what I didn't save the page um, I did see it <laughs> I 
Ah, oh, it's at the front there. So we'll shut the lid. I think we've got everything in that I need. We'll close the lid. Um, oh, else if I plug it in. It's normally a good start. Right, okay. Don't know whether you can actually see over there. See if I can bring you forward a little bit. And if you can see, probably, I don't know, but if you can see what I'm doing, it won't be so bad. Don't have to see me. So, it's high up and I can't uh, see over the top. So I'm so short. Right. So, let me have a look. I can hear Sean laughing in the other room. Right. Let's get the book to make sure I do it right. Menu button, loaf size. I think it's already on large. Let's just check, shall we? I'll do it. It's on large. We're doing a loaf. Medium. Oh, large, right? Yeah, that's okay. Got that sorted. So I think we can just start then. Press and hold for approximately a second. Start a beep sound and the colon flashes, which it is. Okay, well that should be doing. We hope. It's doing something. <laughs> I'm not sure what. But it's making a noise it's doing something so it does give you a rough idea of how long a large basic loaf takes about three minutes for Tony it says three minutes 50 but that's fine we'll just leave it work now and we'll come back and have a look at it when it's done so it's just come out of the bread maker look at that that's nice I'm going to see if I can tip it out and put it onto the um, rack, wire rack, and you can have a look what it's like. And you know, Dean's not long come home, and look what he's bought, some homemade damson jam. So that's gonna go lovely with the bread. But I'll see if I can take it out, we'll have a proper look at it. Look at that, I'm really impressed with that. Get in the light. That looks really nice and it's risen well. It feels lovely and soft and fresh. Really nice and really pleased with that. So, I'm definitely going to be making more of them. See, it's risen really well. Didn't expect it to rise that well. I'm pretty sure the last bread maker I had didn't um, look as big as that, the bread, but I don't know. <laughs> My memory won't serve me that well. So yeah, that's that and I've got lots of different recipes I can try in it and I do look forward to trying them. I'm going to swing around a bit. I'll look a bit. Not catching the light very well, a bit blotchy there. Yeah, so I've got lots of recipes I want to try out with them and um, if I can grow bits and pieces as well in the summer then I can add bits to it, you know, herbs and dried tomatoes and things like that and make different types of bread it also makes cakes but i'm not going to do cakes in there i'd rather do cake in the oven and another thing it does do is jam so i don't think i make jam in there because i've got a big jam pot and i make it the old traditional way but you never know i might try it at some point you never know but for now i'm really impressed with that i'm really pleased that i'm definitely going to be making lots more bread <laughs> so i'll probably have you join me sometimes when we're doing some so yeah that's it for now. Maybe I'll catch you toward the end of the week again. And until then, take care. Bye.